the hottest books of the week. And we're going to be talking about Cobras, Rob Liefeld, Amazing Spider-Man, key comic books, and no flash to be found. Let's get into it. No flash on the list, but we do have a severed head. Coming in at number 10, we have Crime Suspense Stories, issue 22, a perpetually relevant book, Golden Age, one that would lead to the Comics Code Authority. And we have four record-breaking sales to report on, a 1.5, which last sold for 3100 back in 2022, up 6% with this all-new record-breaking sale of 3299 we got a 5.5, last selling for 71.25 last year, up 47%, now selling for 10,500. Then we got the 6.0, last selling for 87.99, up 23%, selling for 10.8, and then an 8.0. It sold for $10,800 in 2019 and it's up 31%, now selling for $14,100. Iconic, classic, golden age gory cover. I love it. And at the list at number 9, we're talking Jim 98. No Halpert here. We're talking Journey into Mystery, the first appearance of the human cobra to be portrayed by Seth Rollins from the WWE. Take a look at these high-selling books. 5.0 selling for 192 up 32%. 7.5 selling for 411 up 10%. 8.0 selling for 465, an increase of 9%. And we have record breaking sales. 6.5 last sold for 202 back in 2021, up 3% selling for 208. And an 8.5 last selling this past February for 697 is up 22% selling for $850. Comic fam, do you remember back during the phase three announcement, Kevin Feige announced Infinity War, Captain Marvel. We got the news about Doctor Strange. We had Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans on the stage introducing and announcing Black Panther. And at that conference, they mentioned that the new Captain America movie would be the Serpent Society. And it was like that for a couple minutes because they doubled back and said, just kidding, that's a terrible name. It's actually going to be Civil War and the crowd went crazy. And now the movie went from New World Order to being called Brave New World. And we're here talking about the human cobra snakes again. Hit that like, slab that subscribe, you know, in case it. As we move on to number eight on the list, another key that's always going to be a key. It's Amazing Spider-Man 121, The Death of Gwen Stacy, which is not only canon in comic books, but now also a canon event in the Sony Spider-Verse. We have a CGC 2.0 selling for $180, 3% above its 12-month average. The 4.0 is up 14%. The 6.5 is up 3%. The 7.0 is up 21%. And the 9.4 just sold for $1,500, 3% above its 12-month average. Now, this book is always going to be hot, but it's especially hot because of the role that Gwen Stacy played in Across the Spider-Verse. Then we get the announcement of Beyond the Spider-Verse coming just next year. And there is a confirmed Spider-Woman animated movie currently in development, which we don't know if it's going to be Gwen Stacy or not. Iconic, classic cover. Rest in peace to the legend John Romita. Speaking of the late John Romita Sr., we have at the list at number seven, ASM 129, the first appearance of Frank Castle, The Punisher. John Bernthal going to be reprising his role, and Daredevil production officially shut down because of the writer's strike this past week. That means more time to spec on a book that is really adjusted since its heights that were reached way back in 20, wow. 22, just a year ago, selling for $57,000 at a grade in 9.8. Now selling for $30,000 a year later this past March. Let's take a look at the numbers. The 1.0 is up 4%. You can get an intro copy for $650. The 4.5 is up 2%. The 5.5 is up 7%. The 6.0, that's up 11%. The 7.5 selling for $2,250 for an increase of 7%. And the 9.0 just hit $3,500. That's an increase of 4%. It seems like the delays have only created more hype and more time for collectors to pick up this book. Moving on to number six, more Spider-Man goodness. And finally, we get the first appearance of the Spider-Punk, Kobe Brown in Amazing Spider-Man issue number 10. We've had the first appearance of the Prowler show up for the last couple of weeks, and now we're getting the actual Spider-Punk character. We have a CGC 9.0 that sold for $70, 59% above its 12-month average. That 9.4 is up 25%. The 9.6 is up 33%, and the 9.8 just sold for $291. 
Not a record-breaking sale, but it's up 34% from its 12-month average. The highest this book reached was $450 back in 2021. Recent sales on a 9.8, as Jem just mentioned, hit 291. But we're seeing recent sales as low as like $260. If you're patient, you can probably get it for a little cheaper. This book is down by nearly half and was a standout character in the movie. Join me on the best new place to buy and sell collectibles this next Wednesday over on Whatnot. I'm going to give away my copy. I've been holding on to it for such a long time. I'm a big fan of Spider-Punk. He lives in the uh, 138 universe, you know, the Misfits punk rock universe, essentially. And we also have another character in issue two of Spider-Punk that we just chatted about over on the trending list. You have to keep an eye out for Taskmaster from that world because that's like the main antagonist we'd get introduced to in said comic books. This right here is a book that went from the trending to the hot 10 for the first time this past week. Welcome, Hobby Brown! And keeping it Spider-Man, moving on to number five. I kind of foreshadowed this already, but it's Amazing Spider-Man issue 78, the first appearance of Hobie Brown, the Prowler. He was originally the Prowler before he became Spider-Punk, and this has been on the list for, what, the past three weeks or so? This is why. The 5.5 sold for $160, keeping it at that 12-month average, actually 1% higher. The 6.5 is up 14%. The 7.0 is up 3%. The 7.5 is up 45%, selling for $458. The 8.0 is up 8%, and the 8.5 is about at that average, selling for $460. And then you have a 9.0, which sold for $750, 7% above its 12 months. I can't help but think that members who already had this book are not selling it now. It feels like a tough book to move, especially if you own it in high grade. There's only 18 copies graded at a 9.8. 35 graded at a 9.6 and 77 graded at a 9.4. 9.8s reached $10,800 back in 2021. The last one that came to market sold for $5,040. That was back this past March. Prior to the movie, I suspect if a 9.8 came out in this market right now, even during an adjustment period, we would still see a record-breaking sale. Because there are so many reasons to spec on this character. I'm always a believer of if it hit it before, it could hit it again. And I think the fact that there are only 18 makes it possible. We'll have to see if it hits market. But moving on, we got number four on the list. Wolverine number one, the Frank Miller iconic cover. The one that we've been talking about for the past year. This comic book has hit lows of like $500 this past year. Adjustment period, yes. Frank Miller signing, yes. That spiked the book up. But Wolverine versus Deadpool which has actually been moved up for Deadpool 3, that has this book on fire. We have a 6.5 up 1%, a 9.0 up 3%, a 9.2 up 13%, a 9.4 up 12%, a 9.6 you can buy for $315. Did I already say this is the first Wolverine solo story cover art done by Frank Miller? Inks by Joe Rubenstein? And then we have the CGC 9.8 selling for $709, which is 1% above its 12-month average, but still so far from the heights that it reached back in April of 2021, where it sold for $1,365. Check this out. Rob Liefeld went on a podcast, Nuke the Fridge, and they asked him about the casting rumors surrounding Deadpool 3. Rob has actually chatted with Kevin Feige and has talked about the process in which they like reached out to him to get advice about the movies. You know, he is co-creator. And this is the quote. Some stuff I, I was aware of that was, I, I had to be quiet before it was announced. And I knew, you know, that, that Hugh and Ryan were getting back together for, for Wolverine 3. I've been very fortunate that people put stuff in front of me. Trust me, all I'm saying is I saw that cast list. I, I think people are going to just freaking, they're going to get blown away. And, and, and I'm not saying shit more than what I just said. <laughs> Leave it up to Liefeld to stir up some hype. We've already heard rumors that we would get original X-Men characters back like Cyclops, Jean Grey, Halle Berry, Storm. Does this kind of confirm that? This next book has been on the Hot 10 33% of the time this past year. This is one of the hottest books in the world for over six months straight. And before I talk about it, you need to not just download Key Collector Comics because really, I know if you're watching this show, you've already done that. This is a call to action for those who have already downloaded it. You need to update this app. This is the biggest update Key Collector Comics has ever done. And if you thought there were a lot of comics already loaded on there, if you've ever thought, wow, it's great to be able to see all the keys simply 
you know, without any of those in-between issues. But you know what? I do want to know what's in between those keys. Now is the opportunity where you get just that. Overstreet, I've been saying, has officially become irrelevant. No shots. However, you now have an entire catalog for free on your phone. And I'm not talking modern age comics. I'm not just talking silver age. It even gets to the gold. Use Kotom 101 on the best app in the world, Key Collector Comics. Download it, get a free two-week subscription, and support the show. Now back to one of the hottest books of all of 2023. We have Batman Adventures 12, the first appearance of Harley Quinn in a standard size comic book. We do have Joker 2 coming. You know, Lady Gaga is going to portray Harley Quinn on the screen. We also have the fourth season of the animation about to premiere. It's crazy to see how hot this continues to be with the movie being so far away, even though the show's coming sooner than later. But look, we got a 5.5 selling for $400. We got a 9.4 selling for $825. We got a 9.6 selling for $1250. That's 18% above its 12-month average. And the 9.8 selling for $2,760. But that's not all. We got two newsstands, a 9.2 that sold for 935, 18% above average, and the 9.6 selling for 1720, 11% up. Gem Mint, did you just change the spec direction on this next book at the list at number two? Spider-Man 2099, issue number one. Nowhere on this list is ASM 365, the book that you touted as just a preview. Hey, all I'm doing is right and wrong. This is the true first appearance of Miguel O'Hara of Spider-Man 2099. I just read the omnibus, and if you're watching this video, you already missed it, but I gave one away last Whatnot Show. And we don't just have a newsstand to talk about. There is a second printing white version of this book that you could only get if you bought the action figure. The 9.0 last sold for $300 in 2021. It's up 12% for an all-new record-breaking sale of 335 The 8.0 of the Toy Biz reprint or second print, whatever you want to call it, sold for 250 for an increase of 9%, and the 9.2 had an increase of 3% selling for $306. The regular version in a 9.0 sold for $70, 59% above its 12-month average, the 9.2 up 22%, the 9.4 is up 151%, and there were 23 copies that sold above average this week, and then the 9.6 that sold for $150, 117% above average, with 17 copies that sold above that average. We have so many numbers to report on for this comic book. The 9.8 hit $226 for an increase of 56%. This book was selling under $150 all year long. And you would think that that $226 was an outlier. It wasn't. It sold 33 different times this past week above that 12-month average. And then we have a newsstand 9.8, which sold for $950, 98% above its 12-month average. And we got the data on this book as well. For every 10 sales of the regular version in 9.8, you get one sale of the newsstand, so about 10%. So we just reported on a $226 9.8, but since that sale took place and when we hit the mic today, we have a new record-breaking 9.8 to drop. We have a $377 height that this book reached at that grade back in 2021 for a direct market copy. Today, we're reporting on a $405 new all-time high. Hot damn. Finally putting some respect on my boy Miggy's name, but it wasn't enough to get that number one spot. Number one, we have Ultimate Fallout 4, the first appearance of Miles Morales. I think across the Spider-Verse, beyond the Spider-Verse, and those live action confirmations is what put this one to the top. No Ezra on this list. No Barry Allen. It's filled with Spidey books. And it feels good. We have the first appearance of Miles Morales. We have so many different variants that are trending above market. I mean, I'm just looking at a sea of numbers. So we're going to pick and choose our favorites here. Let's start with the Sarah Pacelli second printing variant, which came out at the same time as the alt cover of cover A, which is also a second printing, where you see Miles Morales' face. We have an 8.5 up 26%, a 9.4 up 58%, a 9.6 up 4%, and you can get this book at a 9.8 right now for $283. And then we got that Mark Bagley second printing that you mentioned. Now check this out. The 9.2 selling for $250. That's 103% above its 12-month average. And then we got the 9.6, which is 5% above average, but selling for 180. So either that 250 is an outlier or somebody got a good deal on that 9.6. Let's take a look at the direct market copy now. The first printing, 9.2, up 15%. You can get this for $618 right now. The 9.4, up 10%. The 9.6, up 5%. The heights a 9.8 reached back in 2022 was $4,499. 
This week we're reporting on a $2,026 sale for a 9.8, which sounds low, but that is actually up over the recent 12-month average, which was comfortably below $2,000 all year long. I have to know what you think in the comment section below. Let your fellow comic fam members take some advice. Is this the time to buy this book? Or is it a time to wait? Could it drop any more? Do you think it's going to go up any higher? And as always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough? Said. <laughs> Said. Butch is, he's uh, very vocal. He's, he's telling you to subscribe and like. That's what he says whenever he meows. We have other videos for you to check out. Ryan, what do you have? I've got books that I'm going to throw into the mystery mail call very soon, so make sure you pay attention to the channel. Secret Wars, number one. It's important, obviously, because it's Secret Wars. Secret Wars, it's important. This is World Street number one, a variant from Dallas by Julian Tatino Tedesco, one of my favorite cover artists. Someone's getting that in a mystery mail call. Comic-Tom101.com to join the community, support the show, and join us on Whatnot this Wednesday, because I'm not just upping the books we're putting in the mail call, we're upping the giveaways every week on Whatnot, and I'm giving away a first appearance of Spider Punk. We'll see you soon. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Let us know what you think in the comment section below, and we'll see you very soon.